sense of life at the moon a lot. And but not at the expense of the rule of law, not at the expense of order, not at the expense of what must be done, what should be done in line with the constitution, in line with uh, our party and in line with our time-tested etiquette, decorum and tradition. So it was, to put him, was it to put him in his place? Sorry? Did you, did you ask that a probe be conducted into his administration? No, you see, government is dynamic. And uh, certain issues come up with time. Certain issues are time bad. When the time has passed, you can bring those issues. But there are certain issues that are alive because government is dynamic. And their gestation period sometimes takes a very long time before you realize that something needs to be done. And as someone that has sworn to protect the interests of the people of Nassau State, to protect their assets, to protect their, 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 their resources, I cannot sit and look the other side when the state's resources are put into danger. But I'm, I will not be too hasty in pronouncing anything until due process and gestation of that process reaches maturity when one can make proclamation or pronouncement. That is the only thing I did. And we have been doing that uh, over and over and over. Take for instance the one of the Zimbabwe farmers is something that all the issues relating to them came to maturity only about two weeks ago, about a week ago. And it's not about prob, it's just about finding out where have these resources gone? How has government conducted itself in the way a man as such resources got spirited or vanished. So uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter whoever is involved. So uh, that are due process. If, if there be anything that affects any individual that uh, government is asking questions, uh, I think one should be bold enough, patriotic enough, honest enough to answer those questions. This is to ensure good governance, to support the fight President Muhammad Buhari is doing towards sanitizing this country by the leaders, or on the leaders and the followers. Hmm. Earlier you mentioned the fact that the voters need to vote out or not allow corrupt people into government anymore. That was the admonition from President Buhari in Oshu uh, at the rally ahead sure. of the governorship. But one of the things that is going to make that difficult is the issue of vote buying. Buying of votes. You know, show me your vote and I pay you if you <laughs> voted the right way. Uh, what do you think we can do about that? Um, thank you very much. I think the issue of vote buying has been taken beyond the scope in which it happened. This is my thinking. And I'm saying this uh, having participated in one of the most visible and vibrant exercises in the last few months. I conducted the equity uh, election. Where the allegations were very rife. Oh, yes. In the first attempt, there were all kinds of things to derail that. And those messengers of uh, doom tried what they could, and they were able to, to abort it in the first attempt. 
when we came to the second attempt, I took cognizance of all that has happened and ensured that I plug and block all those loopholes that could create anything to do with violence, friction, or vote buying. And I can attest to the fact that the, the, the primaries we conducted in Ekiti, there was no any aspect of vote buying, buying when we conducted the second election. Because the way and manner, the procedure, the process we followed, there was no way money could change hands. However, the issue about vote buying is, is it has always been there. Really? Of course, of course, of course. What, what do you call board buying? Once some people go to start distributing rice or certain condiments a day or two before the election. So vote, vote buying is not necessarily on the day of the election. Some vote buying takes place many days from the, from At the, election. the election. So I think it's all a matter of... Uh, uh, being, 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 being honest, being sincere, and being committed. Let all those that are angling for position not resort to using their resources to cow voters into it. Let them come and talk what they have. What are the things they think they could turn around the society for which they want to, they want to lead. So I, 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 I would like to to believe that uh, the issue of vote buy is overblown beyond, beyond proportion. Because if you look at the accusation they're making about a particular governor or candidate uh, buying the, the votes, he doesn't have that money to buy those votes. I presume you're referring to Dr. Fayemi. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Your Excellency, as yes, we want, as but we Fayemi is a fantastic person, and I know him. I know his meme, I know his disposition. Uh, it is a very unfair and unjustified allegation for anybody to come because I was a living witness to what, to the process that threw him up. And if he could not buy the votes of the few delegates that came, why would he have the money to buy the delegates of hundreds, uh, the, the, uh, the hundreds of delegates that voted during the general election? Your Excellency, uh, in winding this down, I want to say it is assumed that you're supporting General Buhari for a second term. From everything you've said from this interview, I won't ask you that. But I will ask you, in a few months, your second term, your second and final term as governor of Nasarawa will be over. From everything you've said, it doesn't seem to me that you are going to hang up your political heart and head back to your business and go and settle down. What's in the future politically for you? Certain people that I consider very critical within the scheme of things in Nasarawa State came to appeal to me that you need to go to the Senate to represent us. This is the only appreciation we can give for what you've done in the last seven years. I gave them about a month to think about. I was to decline that. But when one thought after another came, and I discovered the president has given his nod to contest for a second term, I felt at that time, that the answer to the question of these people has come. Because there's no way I can sit back doing something else other than supporting, partnering President Buhari to consolidate, to take this country to the next level. Because what we have done in this first tenure of Mr. President is to lay the platform, the foundation for a buoyant 
and prosperous nation. I believe the hardest time in the history of President Muhammad Buhari's administration at this time. And we will see his best when all this are on ground and he comes to add value to all those foundations that he has laid for security, for anti-corruption, for sustaining the economy, for raising the hope of the ordinary person, the poor, the poorest of the poor. The hope he has given about the image of this country. The benefits are not now. We can all see, only see the benefits in a second tenor. And that is when those of us that started with him were back in the CPC and are unrepentant supporters of Buhari, irrevocable loyalists of Buhari, people that will go to with President Muhammad Buhari to any level because we believe in him, we trust him, we are committed to his values, ethos, ideals, and philosophy. I cannot but contest for the office of Senate so that I can add my vote to supporting the programs and policies of President Muhammad Bar. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. It's been a wonderful experience. Thank you.